This bat vigilante, it's like a one-man reign of terror. The press has to do the right thing. You don't get to decide what the right thing is. Nobody cares about Clark Kent taking on the Batman. Next time they shine your light in the sky, don't go to it. The bat is dead. Bury it. All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to my spoiler field review for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. So yes, you did hear me. I said spoilers, meaning that I'm going to talk up, down, left, right, in, out, everything that has to do with spoiling this movie. So if you have not seen Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice yet and you don't want to be spoiled or you just don't care, I suggest you turn the video off now. But if you're staying, then you know what's up. My name is Brandon Keith Avery. And this is just my opinion. So jumping into spoilers, I'm going to try to talk about as much as I can. And of course, let's start with the beginning of the film where we show a little Bruce Wayne with Thomas and Martha Wayne leaving the play, going down the alley, and then they get shot and they die and it's a funeral scene. It was a great scene. It was, I love the way it was put together, the cinematography, the score that was behind it with Hans Zimmer. It was magnificent, but it didn't serve a purpose in the story. I don't think it was necessary. I think it was a complete uh, waste of screen time, uh, if you ask me. Now, what I also didn't like was when Bruce is running in the woods because he's distraught. He's at his family's funeral, his parents' funeral. He falls down in the well and finds the bat cave and then all the bats start coming onto him. And there's a voiceover of Ben Affleck talking about a dream and being over a body and Bruce Wayne starts floating in the air like the bats are raising him up. What is that about? I, I really wasn't feeling that at all. Uh, I thought they may circle back around to that of why he keeps having these nightmares even though this was the first nightmare in the movie. But at that point, I kind of I kind of started to worry just like, OK, is this Zack Snyder's style? What's going on? It kind of had me worried just a little bit. But then the next scene, we have the destruction of Metropolis, which looked fantastic. I love every moment of that. It was a very powerful scene. I just love the way they show Ben Affleck, Bruce Wayne, Batman running and driving through the city to get to his employees, his building with his employees in it i mean this guy was fearless he did not care if he lived or died he just wanted to do the right thing superman wants to do the right thing but he pretty much is impenetrable on earth but going back to batman he was just fearless and it was just a great perspective showing all this chaos and destruction on the ground level from the civilian's perspective i mean i love every moment of it i also love the character, I think his name was uh, Wally, that got the building that fell on his legs and broke and cut up his legs. I like how they did that. That was great. And I love how they brought that back around later on in the film where they had the Superman statue in the middle of Metropolis. And he he's a paraplegic or is it paraplegic? No, para, para, paraplegic is too. I think quadriplegic is you can't use your arms and your legs. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know that. But he, he was in the wheelchair and he climbed up to the statue and he did his upper body strength and pulled up there and threw the cap of the spray uh, paint at the cop and was spraying all the stuff on the, like the false god on the statue. I love that and it, it made perfect sense. I love the way they were showing people that love Superman and people that hated Superman. So that made a lot of sense to me and that worked great. I, I, I ate up every bit of that. Uh, going back, another scene that I wasn't too fond of was the scene in uh, Romy, Africa. Um, it was okay. I understand what they were trying to do as far as uh, setting up Superman as the bad guy. And they had the bullet that was in Lois's um, like notebook or whatever. And, you know, they did the forensics on it and whatnot and found out that it was, you know, from LexCorp. Uh, just that scene to me didn't do that much uh, I understand it, it served a purpose I just didn't un I just didn't really care uh, for the scene that much and again it shows the lady in court at the hearing at the senator's office and she's venting just saying hey I don't 
think Superman answers to anyone. He doesn't answer to anyone, not even, I don't think, God. And I like that. And I believe the next scene, because I've only seen this twice, but I believe the next scene is uh, they tried to take, well, they tried, they took a page out of The Dark Knight Returns, not The Dark Knight Rises, but The Dark Knight Returns, a graphic novel and that animated movie that shows the cops pull up to the warehouse and then they're going inside, you know, with their guns and they show Batman rescuing the children that were in the sex trafficking and we see Batman brand the guy. They could have fleshed that scene out a whole bunch more. And the graphic novel, there was actually a fight between Batman and the bad guys. They didn't show that in the film. They put it off screen and it looked kind of cool, but you should have shown Batman take down these guys, like do some, some research and you know find out where their base is and break in and sneak over here and you know and karate shop here and karate shop there and psh, psh. they should have did all of that but they decided to keep that off screen that bugged me um just a little bit because that's just you know um instead of having the scene at the beginning of the film talking about uh, uh the uh, bruce wayne's parents dying there could have been more time that she was given to him uh beating criminals asses and stuff especially if they uh, have a, a sex trafficking ring going on. I mean, yeah, they need to, they need to get out of there. And some people may complain that Batman is too brutal with the branding. No, I'm fine with that. I'm just not fine with him blowing people up in his car, which I, I'll get to later. When this trailer first came out, it made perfect sense to why Bruce Wayne, Batman, was uh, annoyed and angry and frustrated with Superman. You know, they showed it in the trailers that he was there at Ground Zero in Metropolis when it was getting destroyed. But what I did not like was the jump of 18 months later. I did not like that at all. It was such a powerful scene and then it jumps 18 months later and then they're in the Indian Ocean and people are finding the kryptonite from that ship. But after the Metropolis the destruction for Man of Steel and they showed that in BVS. I wanted to see the hours and the days and the weeks of the aftermath after that and how everyone reacted to it. I want to see Batman go to Alfred and vent like, what the hell is going on? This guy just killed thousands of people. What are we going to do? I'm the only superhero. So I must do something right now. And then from that point on, it just shows him training and doing research and looking at all the footage of Superman and how his cells metabolize the sunlight and he gets stronger and all of that. They should have just had a, a, a nice montage of events from the destruction of Metropolis all the way to present day. They just skipped 18 months, but they should have showed Batman angry and him training and building up to that point to where when we do see the suit in the end, we can know that for the past 18 months, Batman has been absolutely obsessed with stopping Superman, possibly based off of a misunderstanding because, you know, it's not like the guy can just call him up for an interview or something like that, but no. And I'll get to when they fight with the suit later on. But, you know, I did not like that uh, too much. Going now, this in this part of the scene, this is when we start to see a lot of uh, Lex Luthor trying to get on the side of the senator. I forgot her name so he can get his import uh, license so he can bring in the kryptonon from the white Portuguese ship. And I like that. I like that she was just like, look, I can see through all your BS. I'm not going to let you do this. Uh, I'm stopping everything right here. And then that other guy came in and just came over to Lex and was like, you know, hey, I think we can help each other out. What is your wish list? Oh, I would like access to the crash Kryptonian ship in the middle of the city. I would also like Zod's body for experiments and whatnot. That was cool. And I like that. But they didn't tell me, tell us, the audience, what the other guy wanted. I mean, are you just giving this information and privileges away to Lex Luthor for free? Why are you not asking questions? Why are you just doing this? I mean, that could have been settled in 10 seconds of dialogue or something like that. Like, hey, you want to get back at the senator because she didn't pass some bill that you wanted a while ago. I don't know. I mean, so many missed opportunities there. But what the film did do a great job on coming back is when Lex Luthor finally did get access to the facility and he had his briefcase and then he's walking down that corridor and they're playing that music, they score, dum, da dum, dum, da dum, dum. I liked all that and it just kind of showing how crazy and conniving and genius Lex Luthor is or Lex Luthor Jr. because this is not really, you know, Lex Luthor. And I really don't have a complaint because 
when I do, I mean, the Lex Luthor wasn't perfect, but I liked him. But this isn't Lex Luthor. It's Lex Luthor Jr. I do want to know what happened to Lex Luthor. Did he die? Is he in jail? What happened? I don't know. I Hopefully he's, I, I don't know what he's doing. But they didn't really clearly say that he's dead. And if they did, please correct me in the comments below. But I, you know, I kind of want to know what's going to happen there. But I, I did like that. I did like Lex. Uh, uh, I did like Lex doing that and with the music, and you know he posed somewhat of a worthy threat as far as that's concerned. And then we meet Batman again in the in the cave and in the Bat Cave, and we get Jeremy Irons, and he's kind of showing us the suit and what he's working on. But they're really not just you know showing why he's working on that mechanical suit. Just like is Bruce going over there? How close are you to completing the suit, Alfred? I must stop Superman. It, the, the the more longer he goes on, the more People will be trustworthy of him and he's just going to trick us and I have to stop him right away. Da, 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 da. We're not getting any of that. He's just working on the suit or whatever, which is cool. But, you know, you got to flesh out the story. You got to give me a reason why these people are fighting and you're not doing that. They, they, they were just giving us random scenes. But then um, 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 Bruce finds out about what Lex is trying to do with the Krypton. And he's like, Batman can't break into Lex Luthor's uh, mansion or house. Why not? You're freaking Batman. You can do whatever you want. I mean, you're a freaking founding member of the Justice League for crying out loud, and w which is coming. You can do pretty much everything you, you any anything you want. But what I, what I really like, and this is probably my uh, favorite part of the movie right here, or one of them, is you had all these scattered plots and they're coming together, and they did really come together at Bruce, not Bruce, at Lex Luthor's home. When you have Lex Luthor, Wonder Woman, uh, for the first time, Batman, and Superman. So they're at the party and uh, Bruce is going downstairs to infiltrate the servers and to put, you know, to, to hack it or whatever, to put the little device on the wires and hack the servers and get the information. What I absolutely loved and it made just so much perfect sense is that Superman is there. And since he has super hearings, he can hear Alfred telling Bruce where to go. And he's like, oh, OK, what is this? And I'm like, OK, I like where this is going. It looks like this is how Clark Kent is going to find out who Batman really is and his secret identity. He's already not a fan of him too much because of the brutality and the branding and whatnot. And I really do like this. But as I'm watching it, I'm looking, I'm like, wait a minute. But Superman will not want to give away his identity of being Clark Kent. So it's not like he can just go up to him and be like, hey, I hurt you with my super hearings. Who do you have in your ear and trying to, what are you doing to Lex? No, all he can do is really sit back and listen. And I like that. And I like the way they brought Wonder Woman into this, how she's there as well. She's just not there just to be there. She's there because she's trying to get the picture of her in 1918 with Belgium. And they showed Chris Pine, uh, Chris, uh, Chris Pine in that photo. That that's, that's perfect. I love the way, the, I mean, that, that's a, perfect cohesive reason for the plot and story where all these characters have to come together superman henry cavill clark kent is a journalist is a reporter bruce wayne is trying to hack into the system and so is wonder woman trying to get the device and i love how they uh, superman can hear him and he's going to go chase batman down downstairs and i'm like oh man how is this going to play out but he gets distracted and from the fire in warriors mexico so he can't he can't pursue that he has to leave and put on his superman uniform and go to warriors mexico and save that little girl and from that, this whole scene right here, and it was funny when Lex Luthor was trying to give the speech and he was fumbling over his words. I like that. The guy was weird. I like that. It seems like he's not as confident as his father. It seemed like his father beat him because it seemed like later on in the film, he was talking about, you know, what I learned. I learned that you can't escape your father's beatings or something like that. So I can't wait till we see that and possibly Man of Steel 2, um, directed by George Miller. Uh, I forgot the guy's name. The guy that did... Um, Mad Max Fury Road or whatever. There's rumors that he may come and do Man of Steel too. But, you know, I, I did like that. That made sense in that scene um, where uh, Lex was tripping over himself and Superman had to go fly away to Warriors, Mexico to save the girl. And then what do we have next? We have all these amazing feats of Superman flying around. He's he's walking in, in an Arctic or something, pulling some type of big something. And that just looked badass. I mean, like, it just, I love that. That was just totally epic to me. I loved it. It was badass. I'm like, yeah, this Superman, just big old swole that just, ugh, I can pull a big sh You can't. 
I love that. And they had the music and the score in the background. And it was nice montage with him saving the uh, ship as it exploded. And he's coming down and he saved the little girl. And all the people in Mexico are touching him with the makeup on. When I saw that in trailers, I was thinking that I'm like, is this some type of worship Superman makeup or something? But no, they were probably having some party festival, you know, kicking it, having a good time fire broke out and they still had their makeup on and i love that he, he comes in and just saves the day he's not asking for no money he's not asking for no food he's just trying to do the right thing and they're just like oh superman thank you ah. and it's all slow-mo and stuff and i love that i mean that was great and you have all you have neil degrasse tyson or degrassi tyson and these other tv celebrity host and panelists and they're all giving their two cents on if superman should do this and if she, she should do that if he's good or bad and and the senator is saying that he shouldn't you know help people um i forgot what she said but i like what she said i forgot the exact words but i'm loving all that that was that was that was beautiful i love the scene at Lex luther's house and how i transitioned over into superman and how everyone had their uh, opposing views that that was great that was great and then the senator is talking about this is democracy and we have to talk about things and talk things out and then they invite him to the capitol and superman is at the capitol and i love that and lex got the wally guy and he manipulated him like hey you know why don't you be heard and go to the capitol you know let me see if i can help you out and what i don't know is and i kind of like it is I don't know if Wally was in on the bomb bombing or not. That could have been Lex Luthor just blowing people up because, uh, you know, he was bitter and he wanted his import license and the senator denied him. Or that could have been um, a, 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 a Haku, a um, uh, Wally and and Zach, not Zach, Wally and uh, Lex Luthor teaming up together. He could have been playing like, hey, I don't have nothing else to live for. I'm just going to blow myself up. I just want to make Superman hurt and live back. And I love that. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting that. I was really expecting to have a drawn out conversation with everyone in that capital on why Superman needs to be there. And that would have been nice. They could have let the conversation play out a little bit more and then blow everybody up. But that would have been a, an important piece of the puzzle. And Superman is there and he the place blows up and he's just looking at it like, dang, you know, why didn't I see this? And then the film just cuts away and it shows Bruce Wayne receiving the mail that Lex Luthor said over you let him kill your family and Bruce Wayne just gets mad and then starts training and then it just cuts over to uh, the aftermath of him breaking into uh, Lex Corp to steal the kryptonite when I thought that was a horrible idea. First of all, you should have, I, I guess Batman just didn't care and kicked the door open and they were trying to defend themselves because there was bullets and explosives everywhere. Batman, be a stealth ninja that you are. You don't have to do that. Have, I mean, people love you and Gotham. Don't make enemies. There was no reason for you to leave your batarang and the thing right there. I mean, did you just assume that was Lex that did that? Is that what you're trying to do? I mean, you have you didn't you, you don't know that the film didn't do a good job of telling us that. So I mean, why are you so? Why would you leave your batarang there? That's just dumb. No one can catch you if they try. But still, that's just stupid. You could have been more stealth like. You know with you trying to get that kryptonite and I, I didn't like that and if they if they could have if they didn't want to show uh, Batman being the stealth ninja that he is sneaking in to get it and, and and cracking this and hacking that you could have shown the battle of him breaking in that would have been cool as hell to see Batman break into Lex Corp just another wasted opportunity that you did not show Batman um, and his full potential fi fighting Lex and you know I just didn't like that now going back to where before Batman got the kryptonite, this scene right here probably pissed me off the most is when they show Batman and his Batmobile for the first time. I hated that scene. It started out so great with him being like a G just standing up there, you know, like this or whatever, you know, just, yes, I'm Batman and look at me roar. You know, they can't see him up there. He's a stealth ninja and he has this little sniper rifle tracking device. And then he shoots the truck. Okay, makes sense to me. So since you're tracking the truck, why does you have to follow it in the Batmobile, blowing up everybody, making all types of noise, drawing attention to yourself? You couldn't just track the device to LexCorp and get it later? Now I thought about, I'm like, okay, well maybe he did want to attack it in route because it would be easier to steal. 
because once it gets to the facility, you have to break into a building and that could be much harder. But why was everything about him so sloppy? He ran over a guy and killed him point blank. He just cut on his headlights and just T-boned him, bam, ran him over. And then he grappling hooked the car and threw the car on somebody else. And then he's jumping through the boat. He's, he has a gallon gun on the front of his car and he's just blowing the hell out of people, just shooting the crap out of them. I'm like, what's going on? Batman doesn't do this. He doesn't kill. Where did this come from? You got so, you got so, they got so many complaints at the end of Man of Steel because Superman kills Zod, which was warranted in my opinion. It made sense to me, but you want to come back the next go around and have Batman just blowing everybody away. And then when he's, uh, when he's in his Batmobile jumping over buildings and through stuff, he almost knocks the whole half, back half of the truck off. He was this close to knocking off the tracker. What if you knocked off the tracker, man? And then, you know, there was no way for you to be able to find the kryptonite at Lex Corp's place. I mean, you are. And another thing, you already knew it was going there anyway. Because, I mean, so why did you need to track it anyway? I mean, unless you just thought, OK, maybe Lex Luthor has multiple facilities and he's going to hide it in facility X, Y, Z over here on the ground. I can kind of give you that. But. I mean, you almost knocked off the tracker, man, and that, that just didn't make any sense to me. It just didn't. Something else that did not make sense at all was the nightmare dream sequence of Earth slash Apocalypse. So Bruce Wayne Batman finally cracks the code to Lex Luthor's military grade encryption, and he finds the photos and everything of Wonder Woman, and he, you know he's talking to her, and then he's trying to decrypt the message and I guess he falls asleep and he wakes up and he's in uh, apocalypse or whatever or or earth or maybe that's his thought that if he doesn't stop Superman this is what the world will come to I mean is Superman and his henchmen with the patch are they teamed up with dark side and those parademons that makes no sense to me at all it was a cool scene but it makes it made sense somewhat that okay if, if Batman does not stop Superman and, and check him, that Superman is just going to get power hungry and have all these soldiers follow him and ruin the world. I can understand that. I can understand that perfectly. But when the parademons and then that big moth fly mutated looking fellow comes and knocks him out, where, who are they? Are those the darks, are those dark sized parademons? If those are, why are they teaming up with Superman? Because to what I understand is Darkseid can't stand Kryptonians and thinks they're a weaker race than he is because, you know, he, he is a god. And then what doesn't make sense after that is when he wakes up, we get the Flash coming. And before this movie came out, there was rumors that that nightmare sequence is because Flash comes back from the future in time to the past to warn him. But the way they did it in the film just doesn't make sense. He's like Bruce. You were right a long time. You were right all along. You were right the whole time. Lewis is the key. It's all about Lois. Uh, find us. Find us, Bruce. I think that's what he said. And it was kind of hard to make out the other stuff. And then Batman just wakes up. That, that doesn't work for me at all. None of that made sense. I'd rather have just had Flash come back in time and just stand there like, Bruce, I know this one doesn't make sense. My name is Barry Allen or my name is Wally West and I come from the future. It, yes, it doesn't make sense, but how did, I, how did I just vibrate so fast and what does it like to come from? I come from the future. If you don't do this, if you don't do that in the 13 months, this person is going to come here and blah, 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 blah. I have to go or I'll ruin the time space continuum, blah, blah, blah. But listen to me, Bruce. You have to listen to me. Everything is counting on you. Zoom and he goes away. But no, I mean, we get a bunch of muffles and, and whatnot. Now, what I'm now, the, the only thing is hopefully this will make more sense in the R rated version that's going to be released on the DVD Blu ray with 30 minutes later. Hopefully that, that will plug in some holes. But this is what my theory is so far. Since we're having a Justice League Part 1 and a Justice League Part 2, tell me if this makes sense. What if in the first Justice League, it's a regular Justice League movie and all the Justice League gets their asses handed to them? Like Darkseid comes or whoever else, Brainiac and, or, or whoever, whoever the villain is, they are beating the crap out of the Justice League. They kill Aquaman, they kill Cyborg. 
uh, they kill Batman, maybe Superman, and Flash is like, okay, damn, I gotta go do something. So in Justice League Part One, he runs back in time and to where we see him meet up with Batman in this movie, Batman v Superman, and gives him the warning. And then in Justice League Part Two, it's the rebooted version of the Justice League because Flash rebooted it by going back, so it's a different time continuum. So does that 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 make sense to you? I didn't really put that together the first time I seen it, but the second time I was like. You know, that makes kind of sense. So if that if, if if you're with me here, I'm just going to repeat it again. When Flash comes back in time from the future into past and baby is the movie we're talking about right now and gives Batman the warning. What if that was the Flash in Justice League Part One? He comes back and warns him. So then at the end of Justice League Part One, you know, Batman gets the warning and he changes up everything that he does. Maybe he doesn't fight Superman. Maybe I don't know. But in Justice League Part Two, that is the 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 rebooted universe in this DCCU uh, universe, and that's when the Justice League comes together. I think that's a pretty good job. Uh, or uh, you know, I, I think that's a yeah. I think that makes sense. I mean, they could go any direction they want. I mean, the the possibilities are endless, especially when you're dealing with the multiverse. And oh my gosh, I could talk about that for another 24 hours with the monitor and the anti monitor and the 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 unit, all the universes and the omniverse and all that stuff. Something else that I didn't like uh, is the reason why Batman and Superman were fighting. So, are you telling me that Batman and Superman basically started fighting because of he shed? She said gossip and notes being left. Lex Luthor's in the back just sending pictures over Superman. Is this justice? What's wrong with this guy? And then Batman receives some letters from Lex Luthor talking about he let your family die. And that's what pisses him off. That's what sends Batman over the edge to just, you know, here I am. It was a great epic scene, but man, come on. I did not like that at all. It makes perfect sense to why Superman wants to fight Batman or to at least go and meet him is because his mom is being captured. Then that makes perfect sense. Anybody would do anything to save their mom. I mean, okay, that makes sense, but it doesn't make sense why Batman is fighting. I mean, you didn't tell us. You, you mean, they showed us in the trailer, but they did not draw that out. I mean, why? And what doesn't make sense is right before superman was about to go fight batman he finds lewis and says look my mom has been kidnapped i have to go force batman to help me ding dong yes that makes perfect sense yes thank you for using your brain i mean don't be an idiot so thank you but as soon as they get over there to the fight he says bruce look um I, we need to talk you don't understand and batman is backing up and he steps in the trap and then that sound wave device starts hitting him and they took that out the dark knight returns frank uh frank miller graphic novel and i like that and then he's like look you don't understand and then the bullet starts shooting him or whatever and superman uses his uh heat vision to destroy the guns right after that he just started keeps fighting why don't you just stop superman be like look the only reason i'm fighting you is because lex luther has taken my mom captured please He's Lex Luthor said that if I don't kill you, my mom is going to die. We got 20 minutes, bro. Please help me out. Why doesn't he do that? They just started fighting without him even talking about it. I mean, the fight started out that way, but just finish the conversation. That's dumb. That makes no sense. Why? Why, 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 why? But then when Superman is right over you with the spear, with the kryptonite spear, Oh, you're uh, you're gonna let him kill Martha. You're gonna let him kill Martha. They could have talked right there, but they didn't talk. And what the hell is Lois doing there? I cannot stand that crap. Why is Lois there? I don't mind her being there on the sideline watching the battle, but she's in Metropolis. Hey, Perry, I need a chopper to Gotham. Lois is on the roof, and then she goes to Gotham, and then she finds the exact place where Batman and, and Superman are fighting, and then it's like downstairs. I mean, how does she get down there? And then when uh, when Bruce Wayne is standing over Superman with the kryptonite spear, why did you say that name? Where did you get that name from? She's like, and, and then she's like, it's his mother's name. 
How do you know that, Lewis, when you was way over there on outside of the building? You don't have super uh, him, super hearing. How did you hear that? I mean, they just were throwing her into the movie just for the hell of it. And I hated that. I'm like, get the hell out of there. And then she almost ruins the day by throwing the spear in the freaking water. Oh, I want to feel important. Get away, kryptonite spear. Like, why are you doing that? I mean, come on, get out of there. I mean, in Man of Steel, there was no reason for her to be in the ship. Or whatever with i mean they probably could have the reason why well she was the only one that knows how to use the device but i still don't buy that they're just throwing her in there to be a damsel in distress that could be the, now a damsel in distress is a good plot device to spread out the, the fighting and i'll get to that in a moment but it did not work in this film and it did not make sense to me why she was there she doesn't need to be there it doesn't make sense why lois has super hearing and it doesn't make sense why batman and superman didn't fight it out i mean didn't talk about uh fighting it out i mean i love the fight it looked great but it it, it just didn't make sense but now um you know another part that just doesn't make sense to me and I, I just didn't understand and if you can if you understand this fans out there please explain to me i don't understand how doomsday was born but at the beginning of the film they had the kryptonite device and they were cutting off zaz's fingerprints and then that's what how loose loose lex luther gained access to the kryptonian crash ship and i love the you know um, Lex Luthor, the Lex Luthor that I know is obsessed with being on top. He's obsessed with being number one and the smartest guy in the world. And in the comments, he has like a, le a level 12 genius intellect. And that's pretty smart. And I like the word they were saying, uh, this ship has 100,000 years of Kryptonian knowledge or something like that. And he's like, yes, teach me. I'm like, okay, that's perfect. I like that. I, I mean, I like the fact that he's there and he's trying to, you know, uh, be on top and figure out and learn. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Great job there. But what I don't understand is when they pull Zod's body in there and, and, the, and the computer was able to be like, okay, this is General Zod and uh, he's a Kryptonian. And then he cut his hand. I don't know why he cut his hand in the blood. And then the thing was like foreign DNA. And then there was like the council doesn't approve of, of uh, not unregistered, but deformed uh, life forms. And it was like, well, where's the council? And the, the computer said the council is destroyed. And he's like, proceed with it. And like, that doesn't make sense. I don't understand why. I don't I don't get it. I mean, may, I think that was possibly the Genesis chamber where from Man of Steel, where that was born. And actually, as I'm talking about, it's making a little bit more sense. But I guess now I guess that was the Genesis chamber because the Kryptonians, they didn't have natural births anymore. They were born. And uh, I mean, they, they were uh, grown. I'm sorry. They, they weren't born. They were grown. So I guess Doomsday is being grown here, but, you know, in the five minutes of learning, I don't understand how Lex was able to put that together. And why is Lex's blood mixed with Zion? Why would it create? I don't know. Um, they they just, you know, they, they really didn't make sense. I don't mind Doomsday being in the movie, but they, they could have fleshed that out. Um, they, they could have fleshed out a lot more. Uh, but something that doesn't and I'm going to talk about the Justice League stuff here in a moment I, and I like half of the Justice League stuff the other half I hate it and I, I'll tell you why part I love and part I hate it but another thing that doesn't make sense to me is now guys think about this just think about it this does not make any sense and the film dropped the ball here okay when Superman and Batman finally decide to team up and there's he's like hey my mom is going to die if we don't work together. And Batman makes the promise to him, I promise that Lex, that um, I will get your mom back. And then Lois is just there and she's like, hey, the crash site in Metropolis, there is a lot of electricity there and it is coming from Lex. Now, guys, listen, this does not make sense at all. And if it does to you, please explain it to me because I was, this is, I was like, this is dumb the whole time. Would they say, okay, Batman is going to go save Martha Kent. And Superman is going to go to Zod, not to Zod, but to Lex Luthor. Why don't Batman and Superman go rescue his mom together? That doesn't make any sense. Does it to you? Because right when Batman leaves, Jeremy Irons is like, hey, Batman, I'm sorry. I was listening in on the conversation and I've tracked that uh, the dude that they thought was the white Portuguese's phone. And they're at this building right here. There are two dozen bad guys on the third floor. Why don't I drop you off on the second? Why in the world is Superman not there to help as well? That is dumb. There's not, it's not like that. Now, if there were some people, see, in the first film in Man of Steel, while the whole city is being destroyed, Superman is not there initially because he's across the world in India trying to stop the other device. 
There's no other device across the world where Superman has to be there. There's no one else in danger or in peril. Lex Luthor is just in the ship preparing Doomsday. So at the end, when Batman, after he rescues Martha Wayne, that's when they show Superman going over to Lex Luthor saying that you lost. But what was you doing the whole time? Batman was fighting. You have super freaking uh, fast abilities, dude. You, I mean, you can get there like this. You're faster than the speed and bullet. You can travel nearly to the speed of light, if not faster. You could have just flown in. You didn't have to punch anybody. You could have just flown through the building. So picked up your mom and flew away. Batman did not have to be at all. Oh, okay, Batman, your boy Alfred said that he tracked it over here. Let me go save my mom real quick. What, what, what is going on? Well, how did, how did y'all? I'm just sitting there like, what the hell is this? This does not make sense. Even Batman did not have to, the, the, the scene was cool and I liked it. It was a badass scene. I love seeing Batman fight and beat ass like that, but it did not make sense. Superman could have just found out where his mom was, just flew through the door. He, I mean, he could have, he didn't, he could have fought the villains, or he didn't have to fight the villains. I don't care if they had guns, pistols, knives, or a flamethrower. It does not matter. Superman could have grown it and saved his mom just like that. Or if even Batman could have been there while Batman is fighting the bad guys, Superman could have just slipped in the in the in the uh, in the side door, or the window, got his mom, flew out of there before they could even blink. I mean, at the very beginning, you had the guy that had Lois with the gun like this, and you flew over there real quick. Why can't you fly over there and save your mom like that? It doesn't make logical sense to me. It just doesn't. If you have a valid reason, please let me know. I would love to talk about it, but that just does not make sense. It does not add up. But, you know, that's just my opinion. But anyway, something that I did like towards the beginning of the film was when um, Lex Luthor found out that he found the kryptonite and he was like hey we found a little piece like this and if we find a big enough piece it can weaponize it and the senator was like why do you want to weaponize it well, it was for a deterrent and he's like oh but in india you know we got a big kryptonite rock a whale and you know that's that's when he said he needs to import license he was like look we need this because there are other people out there like superman the meta human thesis and that's what he's like the meta human thesis and i like that that makes perfect sense I, I like that and it, it wasn't forced in and it kind of takes me back to X-Men First Class where Charles Xavier was talking about the, the mutant how, uh, the mutant thesis and how they're out there. He did his, that's what he had his dissertation on and they did that here in, uh, in the BVS as well and that made sense. But what I hated was at the end of the movie where um, the Justice League Easter eggs. I mean, that was so forced in and stupid. I mean, uh, to me, Flash is not going to get caught on camera. To me, Aquaman is not just going to just sit there and stare at the camera like, oh, what is this, a camera? I mean, you would have sensed that miles away, dude, and you can control, control sea life. You would have just hit a whole bunch of fists to destroy the camera because you don't want to expose yourself. That was dumb. The cyborg thing was cool, but what also doesn't make sense is each of the files had the official logo of said character. That doesn't make sense. Is Lex Luthor the one that names the superheroes and gives them their logo? Ah, uh, yes, we're going to call her Wonder Woman. And the guy that we're going to give him a lightning bolt, he's going to be called Flash. And this guy we're going to call Cyborg. And, you know, they had all the symbols in the system. Now, unless, unless the characters have revealed themselves prior because they do exist, then that would make sense. But if that's the case, the senator would have known about it at the beginning of the film and she wouldn't have like, yeah, the the uh, the meta human thesis. So him them having the logos there was dumb and that was just forced in. I mean, why does Lex Luthor know the official logos of the characters? That just doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, at the end, we have Doomsday. And he comes in and then they're like, just battling out. And it was funny. I was laughing because, you know, Batman, unless he's suited up, he, he can't really paused the threat and let him but he did kind of save the day with the kryptonite grenade but man he was grappling hooking the hell out of that play oh i gotta get out of oh shit oh <laughs> that was funny to me I, I really did like that and it was a nice fight i like that i like how they had doomsday go up into space uh the only thing is uh, that would have been kind of cool i mean i like how they blew him up but you know in the i wish i, I should have had it here as a prop but in the Superman Doomsday animated movie, he takes him into space like that. And then he just dives all the way down and, and drops Superman into the earth and nearly uh, and kills him that way. 
And I, and I liked that. And the fight was pretty badass. You had Wonder Woman coming in there with her her uh, her bracelets blocking stuff with the shield. She had a sword and she was about it. She was there. She was like, look, I'm, hey, I'm finna mess somebody up. She had the lasso of truth. And I liked that, you know, through the lasso of truth and holding him. She's like, ah. And then Superman's back like G just doom. And then they're shooting and the music coming on. Da -da 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 -da. The CGI with Doomsday wasn't the best. But uh, Superman dies, um, I guess, because of the Kryptonite 2. And I forgot how he comes back to life. But he's going to come back, of course. You know, and I, I like that. I like that. So, um, I want to, you know, that's my spoiler field review, guys, of Batman v Superman. I liked it a lot more the second time around. I tried to talk about it as much as I possibly could. Hopefully, I did not forget anything. But if, uh, if I left anything out and you want to chop it up with me, just leave a comment below why I gave this film a 7 out of 10 because I, I did enjoy it a lot. I was going to give it a 6 after I saw it. The I gave it a 7.5 when I was thinking about it. I was like, no, this is like a 6. And then I saw it again. I was like, no, you know, I actually have fun. So I'm, I'm going to leave it at a good 7, which is kind of like a C plus B minus. Well, C plus B minus, whatever. And my, the way I grade, and you can head over to the website to uh, look at my uh, scale on how I grade uh, www.justmyopinion.net. But anyway, guys. What did you think of the film? Did you like it? Do you, do you, did you hate it? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't like the video, that's fine. You can just leave me a comment below why and still give me a thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get all the content that I have to provide in the past and in the future. And if you'd like to find me on any other platforms or any of the written reviews that I write about films or anything else that I think is cool, head over to the website or you can find me at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and all that good stuff. And guys, share the video. I'm not going to get mad if you share the video. So thank you for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace. Ugh.